Okay, good morning, my name is Patrick Popescu. Today I'm going to be presenting my Fundamentals of Project Management project. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a lot of things crashing on me right now. Hopefully I can do this in one shot. Sorry for the video quality, it's an older laptop. Okay, so I'm looking at my uh, PowerPoint here, and it's um, I'm on the first page. <clears throat> so my uh, project is basically uh, we're going to call it the missile software using satellite imaging and target confirmation. We're calling I'm going to call it MISC for short. Uh, put where I work down there, and. Uh, Basically, our agenda is what's the purpose and why we're doing this project, um, what kind of scope we're doing, what kind of deliverables, um, who's going to be involved as far as the stakeholders and how we're going to analyze uh, the stakeholders, um, give you kind of a uh, work breakdown structure as far as the, the timelines and uh, you know, the timelines, um, discuss who on the project team is going to have what responsibilities and what, um, yeah, uh, have a overview of what the Gantt chart schedule is going to be and, um, discuss a little bit about the risks involved in this project. <clears throat> so next slide, uh, my project charter is, uh, basically a direct link in alignment between the project and the, our strat strategic objectives. Um, in the case of the MIST project, um, is to improve software capabilities on the current um, systems. <clears throat> the requirement is, we're basically saying we want the missile software that um, the missile has an image and it talks to the satellite that has an image and the missile needs to look at both images and confirm that that's its target. <clears throat> and the scope of the work is how, how does the missile do that? How will it communicate with the satellite? How will the satellite stay up to date? How will the missile stay up to date? How will the software itself stay up to date? And the agencies involved, the stakeholders involved, how are they going to stay up to date as far as their technology advances? Okay, slide four. So stakeholder is someone who can positively and negatively impact the project. Um, the next slide, I have a list of them and uh, have the potential stakeholders in relation to this project and how they help. And then following after that is a stakeholder analysis matrix um, that helps in defining the stakeholders who are the most important, who's going to engage. And that <clears throat> I'll, I'll go on to the next slide. So in this case, I have three potential stakeholders. Uh, the big, the big um, contractors here, Raytheon, Northrop, and Lockheed. Um, they're all going to be very high in importance, um, and very high in uh, the level of support they they can do. Uh, I've worked with a number of them, and they, you know, they're all really good at their job. They've been around a long time, so they work with our technical folks mostly, and I, you know, deal with the contracts. Um, so what I what I want from them is basically good communication and. Um, and production of the project. And I assume what they want from us is a, you know, good, I have, I put time, money and quality. So, I mean, they want us to communicate well with them. Um, they want to get a good price on, they want to make the most money they can. And, um, they want quality work between the two between the contractor and the technical folks. 
So how could they block um, our efforts? <laughs> Not being responsive, um, trying to, in contracts, they generally, you know, take forever to reply or they can't take forever to reply, I should say, or they, the terms and conditions are usually take long to negotiate. <clears throat> as far as the technical side, I don't have enough knowledge on that. Um, it from the project managers I've worked with, they seem to be, they seem to get really because they talk to their counterpart at the at the vendor. They seem to work out pretty well. Usually, it's usually like the business side, the contract side that has the most challenges that I know of, at least. Last one, stra uh, strategy for enhancing uh, stakeholder support. Yeah, basically better communication. Um, make sure they get paid. I'm sure that's a big one on them. And um, uh, the collaboration between everyone. Let me go back to the project charter to explain better why there's potential three vendors. Um, the project itself is the first uh, contract that would be awarded would be um, a prototype between, so all three of them will get a contract and they would <clears throat> each build the, the better software for the missiles and the satellite. They'll show us how they can complete this project. And then whichever of the three we end up liking, we can award options to them or continue working with them in the future. But it seems to be, if all three of them win and then compete against each other, that's just best for the government. This shows competition and uh, diversity and that's what we like to see. So back to the slide five stakeholder analysis. Here's here's why I have three of them because in the beginning there will be three. Afterwards, um, whoever they they wish to, whoever the technical folks wish to work with further on. Okay, so I'm moving on to work breakdown structure slide six. The work breakdown structures, the tools and techniques used in related to this project and creating a work breakdown structure is the, the one I used with mind mapping. So WBS is a process of subdividing project deliverables and project for work into smaller and more manageable components. In the mind mapping I use a visual representation that helps associate meaningful relationships amongst ideas. So slide six, here's my work breakdown structure. Basically the, the top one is the project itself. And uh, the four key components is gonna be software development, how the agencies are going to stay up to date, um, how the satellite imaging is gonna stay up to date, and uh, the, how the missile software, photography software is gonna stay up to date. So basically everything here is all just software, how, how the, it's all computers talking to each other. <clears throat> Between those four, break down a little bit more. Um, at software development, so I see. Um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, there's advances in the satellite imaging imagery, and advances in missile components. Um, so we want to constantly update a lot of these missiles. Are really old. So we want to constantly update an antiquated technology. And uh, by doing that, we also want to make the processing chips, uh, and I, I don't know the technical terms, so let's just use them as they are. Uh, the processing chips, you know, we want them smaller and faster. <clears throat> the agency themselves, um, you know, that we want to update, they want to update as well. Um, if we have these two missiles trying to talk to each other and Raytheon is still working on paper, it's gonna be hard to keep it balanced, to stay moving along together. Uh, the satellite imaging, uh, we can how the 
how does the satellite communicate with the missile? Um, so again, we want the we want want all those updating in real time. If we want the missile as as the missile is finding its target and communicating with the satellite, we want that to happen real fast. So the satellite imaging needs to have the right software for that. And again, the missile and likewise the missile photography the missile needs to talk to the satellite. And the missile itself needs to uh, be able to process that in real time. So again, that also means that agencies need to constantly update their um, systems. Okay, we're well, on slide eight here. So here I have the responsibility assignment matrix. So th this matrix will show who is responsible for doing the project and who is accountable and um, it also shows who may be just a consultant on the team and um, who just needs to be up, like just know what's going on. So here I have the activity. So we have, which is what I've taken from the, um, the work breakdown structure. So we have software development, uh, real-time photography, real-time imaging, agency updates, and um, agency advancements. Uh, here are the project team and uh, each individual's, um, uh, I should have put the legend, I just see that now. I, I can add, uh, okay, well, let's move on. Um, so each of them are um, who is accountable, who just needs to stay informed, and um, who is this consultant on um, each of those projects. I try to distribute it evenly, not someone is responsible for multiple uh, activities. Um, you can see each one of them has their own requirement and then each one of them has their own accountability and for information or consultant. Okay, moving on to the Gantt chart. Um, so the Gantt chart is a bar schedule to inform the activities are, uh, with that are listed in, in the vertical axis. Uh, these dates are shown on the horizontal axis and activity duration are shown in the, hor as shown in the horizontal bars placed according to the start and finishes. Basically an Excel program or an Excel sheet showing the timeline and schedule of the activities. Got that from the Got that definition from the PEMBOK. So I'm on, I'm on slide 10, the Gantt schedule. I have a split screen here, so I gotta... I've never done this before, I don't know if it would keep recording me if I make the PowerPoint uh, full screen. So again, here I have um, the the different activities, I have A through F. Um, we're gonna update old technology. Uh, the chip, the processing chips are gonna be smaller and faster. The agencies are gonna stay technology advanced. The software is gonna stay updated. Um, we gotta make sure uh, they're able to do real-time imaging. <clears throat> so then there's the, who's this assigned to? And um, each of these days from start to end are um, connected to each other. And as far as the timelines, scroll into the right here, as far as dates, we go from June to June 30th. In, in a real life situation, I think these dates would be much more um, spanned out. Um, they, uh, for this scenario, I made them pretty close to each other so we can see the time frame. But I imagine it would cross, you know, a, a year span. Okay, slide 11. So quality risk analysis. The risk analysis tools consider how probable a risk will affect the project and how and what impact would be 
if it occurred. For this project, a common rating, a rating system of one through five was used, where one being low and five being high. Slide 12, so here's my probability impact matrix. Um, and some of the problems we can run into is the, is the software not communicating well with, it, with each other. These are all high impact. Um, the softwares don't update the agency. The agencies are going to be behind no matter what. So it's uh, put that as a three. And uh, I put satellite malfunction. Somehow the missile can't talk to the satellite. I, I would assume that would be unlikely, but possible. Um, see, so each have the probability, the software doesn't communicate, medium range, same thing with software update, agency updates, the probability is going to, like I said, it's going to be high, they're not going to be, excuse me, um, updating, and the satellite malfunction, even though possible, still low. We have a total there, so management is basically to mitigate every, um, most of these countermeasures, uh, best maintain the software, update software. So we'll get to the bottom. Um, if the satellite malfunctioned, there's no way to mitigate that, so that's just a contingency plan. Um, it's hard to pretend this is a possible risk. Uh, we just have plans in case uh, something goes wrong. So that's my conclusion. Try to back up here. So again, the purpose of this project is to improve on uh, old systems and or the focus on uh, feature enable capabilities. Our end goal is to find a vendor to supply us with a required deliverable that is fit to the government's cost schedule and quality. And uh, through, uh, hopefully through these uh, variety of tools I've used, I can show you an effective an efficient plan to outline a successful project. Thank you.